we looked at all kinds of diseases the Chinese government gave to this and measured things in blood and urine, as I said. We ended up with a, literally more than 100,000 correlation coefficients of everything being related to everything else, and then we were trying to sort out you know, what was statistically significant or not, and then you start taking a step further, exploring these individual trees in this forest, in, in a sense. And so these are just a list of some of the relationships that we looked, looked at. A little bit reductionist, one thing at a time, that I'm sort of criticizing in a sense. But it, it, I mean, to, to understand how these, these relationships really work is helpful because it, it tends to set the mosaic, you know, what the larger picture look, might look like. And so, and, and this is basically is all published stuff, so we had the advantage of, you know, having our peers look at, in fact, what we were doing. Um, and so, just a couple of observations from that. I'll come back to what that means in a, in a second. Um, it turns out that the blood cholesterol levels in the Chinese population were all, really below 150 milligrams per deciliter, which was sort of unheard of in those days. I mean, their range was their range of averages for the different counties was from 90 to 170. Their high was near or low. So we're working with a population where cholesterol levels are really pretty low. You know, going from 90 to 170, I mean, ours goes more or less from 150 to 300 or something like that. But to look at any possible correlation going from, let's say, 98 to 150, we saw, I didn't think we would see a whole lot. Because in that population in rural China, they're mostly consuming plant-based foods. Some animal-based foods, of course, it, there's a certain range. Uh, so we didn't think we'd see a whole lot based on that. But it was, it was kind of exciting to have the opportunity of looking at, at this. And I'll just throw that one here out, consume more calories. That's worth a couple of seminars, but basically, Counting calories don't count, you know, as much as what people like to think they do. It's the way we actually metabolize and experience the use of these calories um, that, that really matters. So here's another heresy that arose from the China study. Uh, I mean, this is a huge thing. I hate to sort of be so conscriptive, you know, <laughs> on, on all this information. But um, basically, looking at the data in many sundry different ways, Relatively small intakes of animal-based foods are associated with the secret. There you have it. And coming from the dairy farms I did, and eating that way, and all this kind of stuff, you know, getting to this particular point in time, getting really robust evidence, you know, involving multiple different kinds of diseases, involving the convergence, you know, of nutrient experiences uh, in the form of food, uh, really kind of put the story together in a way which was very exciting. Um, and so this is what the China study sort of showed us, in addition to giving us some evidence of what that context was all about. The vast majority of those things I showed before of these hypothetical cause and effects associated favor of nutrient composition of plant-based foods. Uh, and consuming a plant-based, and this is the key here, whole foods, I'm not talking about taking the nutrients out of plants and putting them in a, in a pill. They don't work. Nutrient supplements don't work in the long run. They really don't. A lot of people think that's nutrition. That's pharmacology, in my mind. That's not, not really nutrition. But in any case, um, so less total protein, no animal protein, less, okay, then it's consistent. I mean, I, I, I'm general, I'm really summarizing a whole lot of stuff here, but that's more sort of, the, I guess, the main observation that I'd like to bring to your attention. Um, and to address that question concerning nutrient supplements, for which there's been a multi-billion dollar industry for the last 20, 30 years. Everybody takes their nutrient supplements in the hope of getting something out of it. Um, I've always had the, the thought that uh, that's, uh, that, that's questionable to even assume that in the long run. It's sort of violating, in a sense, you know, what nature is all about. The idea that we can take a single nutrient and throw it into our body at some dose at the, at the wrong time and expect to get the kind of results, in fact, that we want. That, that we have now a lot of evidence that that's really not likely to be true. And in fact, just recently, in the last four or five years, six, seven years or so, there's been actually quite a number of really good reviews of all these trials that have been done on single nutrients. And those, those robust reviews, the most recent one involving 58 different studies over the past 15 years or so, have making conclusions. They don't work. I mean, here's a couple of statements here. No evidence to support antioxidant supplements to prevent mortality. You can see it for yourself. Beta carotene, vitamin A, vitamin E, and now we can add some more, like omega-3s. Recent studies are showing this too. 
that those kinds of supplements that people like to think are nutrients, they're sort of the magic tricks that people think they're going to want to use, they're not working. They actually can increase sig significantly some of these diseases and perhaps, uh, you know, total mortality even. So I want, I'll just point this out because what I'm talking about is whole foods, you know, not, not the individual nutrients along the way. And so now it raises some new questions. And when I got together with my son, who had, at the time was a graduate in theater, he was an actor in Chicago, good, good writer, got him to help me to write. Uh, he's now in medical school, by the way. I had to give him credit because <laughs> he's a, he's a co-author. When we sit down to do the book, uh, I wanted to go back and systematically look at some things that I had kind of paid attention to over the years, but look at a little more seriously. And I was asked this question. How is this information that we're learning from the China study, learning from the experimental studies, how is this information uh, related to, let's say, findings of others, of colleagues? Maybe that haven't been, haven't been noticed. And uh, here's one gentleman here, Caldwell Esselstyn, at the Cleveland Clinic, now a good friend, a very distinguished surgeon from many years at Cleveland Clinic. He, he, he's got as much distinction professionally and personally as probably any, anyone on, in, the, in the field by far. In any case, he did a study here where just very briefly, I'm going to say he took 18 patients with heart disease, seriously ill with heart disease. These were, these were 17 men, one woman. These are people who have been told by the physician, time's up. We can't do anything more for you. Very sick, very advanced. They had had 49 coronary events during the eight years prior to the study. Eight, you know, 49, that's about three apiece. They went from that after he put them on the same kind of diet that we're learning about in the China study. We didn't know each other at the time. This is, this is his game, uh, and he was doing this for other reasons, and the results that he got, in fact, was that he went from 49 to zero during 12 years of follow-up. And now it's actually in excess of 20, up to 23 years. One person in that group, there's three have died, but not from coronary events. One did have a coronary event, but that person, that, that man actually strayed a bit from the, from the idea. And so it sort of proof the pudding in a sense. He came back and everything was fine. So, uh, I mean, you can see for yourself here, I mean, going from those 49 counterparts at zero, if the drug companies had had 10% of that effect, we'd all heard about it in the headlines across the country. <laughs> Why is this? You know, not, not, not considered more. And incidentally, this is the same thing what we are learning from the scientific and theoretical point of views as far in, in our own studies. Um, and so I could go, I've got a bunch of slides, you know, go into multiple sclerosis and rheumatoid arthritis and osteoporosis and different kinds of cancers. We have data now that really is all just spectacular like this. And so here's just a list. Here's a list of some things. All these diseases, as far as the diet is concerned, we're talking about whole plant-based foods. The same diet, whole food, plant-based, prevents, suspends, and here's the kicker, cures all these diseases. It's truly amazing. And I'll have a chance to get into that. We think of this diet as a means of preventing these diseases. We now know, and look at the literature, that it has this very broad effect of all kinds of, on all kinds of illnesses and diseases. And actually, when used, even in fairly advanced stages, we can see results just almost immediately to see reversal. Type 2 diabetes, for example. I have a physician friend in California who takes in uh, type 2 diabetics. Very sick. When they come in, puts them through a 10-day period, he says, give me all your meds. He gets them and sticks them in a cabinet, locks the keys, so you're not going to have them. Because when he puts them on this diet, their, their need for insulin goes down so fast that were they to stay on the insulin medications, they'd go into hypoglycemic shock. That's how potent it really is. Um, and so this is just a list of some of these diseases, obviously some of them very serious, others sort of nuisance kind of things. Uh, I mean, it's... Well, I don't need to say more, I don't think. Um, it also promotes physical fitness. I, that might seem a bit odd, but I've worked with some world-class athletes, including one fellow who is the all-pro end for the Kansas City Chiefs, is going to be in the Hall of Fame. He's, he holds the all-time record, most touchdowns, most yards gained. I mean, he, a couple of years, uh, got the book because he was, saw somebody on the plane using it. He decided to change in his program 
going into the season a couple years ago, 